Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, I'm working on the Steam Stoker engine project, and uh, we got a couple of parts we need to make, and the goal for today is I want to try to get the uh, valve pieces all put together. So we've got the valve rods, our connecting rods here, the actual valve rods that go into the uh, engine. Uh, I got some little turnbuckle pieces that were made by my friend Chuck Bomarito. I'm going to show you those in a minute. Um, let me just show you what all we got and what's left to do and we'll get at it. So what I've got laid out here are all the pieces and parts that go with the valve uh, assist system on this uh, steam engine. And the valve, of course, controls which side of the piston the steam is injected into. This is actually the valve, and it basically just slides back and forth inside of a sleeve uh, that's ported, and it puts the, the steam where it needs to go. So this piece here is the, the main connecting rod that goes to the crankshaft. You got the bronze bushings in here. That's in the crankshaft. This goes down to this block, which we're going to replace. Uh, in fact, there's the replacements right here. Actually, they'll go like that. Um, and I'll just mention real quick that uh, these parts here were made by my friend Chuck Bomarito, uh, Outside Screwball, over on YouTube. And uh, he, uh, I, I've got a couple of people that wanted to collaborate with me on this project, and there's a couple people making some parts and pieces. Chuck was one of them, uh, and he reached out to me, said he wanted to do it, so I sent him some drawings. And, and uh, he put together a little video talking about his experience making uh, these uh, parts right here. So we got this little knuckle piece as well as the clevis pin uh, that fits up on this piece here. It is a little bit different than the one that's on here. This is made exactly to the blueprints uh, that I have. This is what was on there. Uh, and I think that this may have been replaced by the railroad at some point in time. And they just didn't take the time to turn it out on the ends and round over the corners they just got a functional piece in there there's nothing wrong with this it works perfectly uh, but this is as as the drawing was uh, drawn up so we uh, made the new part like that so i'm gonna put a link down in my description uh, to uh, chuck bomberito's video that he did on this i encourage you to go take a look at it chuck's a great friend met him several times been to his shop before uh, when i was out in california one time and uh, he did a good job on these and <laughs> it's, it's a huge story listening to his experience on making these let's just say that uh he sent me two but he made four and uh there's a reason for that uh anyway moving on uh this this piece here is just a transition piece it slides in a little block that's in the in the main casting and it converts remember this arm here is rocking because it's going in that cam motion around the crankshaft uh, when it goes through that little shaft it's, it's just got a little short movement in this thing uh, but this piece here basically connects here and this is going to be running perpendicular all the time it's going to be running flat and uh, we made these valve rods here this is the actual valve assembly and um, that's kind of the assembly as it is together i got two parts i need to make uh, one is this jam nut right here and this is just to kind of go up against that little buckle piece that that uh locks it in place and there's also a castle nut that goes on the end here. Uh, there's a hole that's drilled in here and you turn that in and you pin it and that way it can't come out. And um, both of these parts, while the threads are a standard size, uh, the outside diameters of these are larger than standard hardware that you can order today. And, you know, I could probably just order these two parts from McMaster Car. Uh, put them on here, but I wanted to go back to the original sizes, so I'm going to be making these two parts, and uh, that's going to be the first thing we work on today. And to do that, I've I just got some hex material here um, that we're going to be turning these out with over on the lathe. And with that, let's get at it. We're going to turn a jam nut and a castle nut. Uh, we're going to clean up the rest of these parts and get these things ready so that when the time comes, we can just put them back into the steam engine. I'm going to start by making these jam nuts, and uh, I think this is inch and an eighth or sixteenth, I can't remember, doesn't really matter. We're going to start by facing the bottom and just turning a round piece on there. If you look where the 
hex pieces stick out. They just kind of went in behind that a little bit and just got a nice round surface in there. So uh, that's going to be step one here. So we'll just come in here and face that bottom. Just like that. And then I'm going to relieve until I just get to the edge of the uh, hexes, just like that. And I may take this a little bit more off that bottom. It's gonna feed in and come out. That's all we need. So we've got uh, that little round surface in there and the hexes part just kinda hangs out a little bit. All right, next step, I need to drill and tap this for 5 8 11 and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap it deep enough that we'll get both nuts we got to make in one i'll part this off and we'll make another one right behind it for a 5 8 11 hole we need to drill it to uh 17 30 seconds i've got a 17 30 seconds drill bit and i'm gonna drill it about an inch deep which uh should give me plenty of uh, room for the two two nuts I'm going to do plus some clearance in the bottom for my tap uh, to make sure I get a nice full thread in there. I just got a mark on my drill bit right there which tells me I'm to depth. I've got a 5 8 11 tap in here now just a tap wrench. I probably could power tap this but uh, I just always a little bit reluctant to power tap into a blind hole because if you bottom out you break your tap. So uh, I'm going to do this by hand and I've got a tap follower in here to keep everything nice and straight. Uh, we are going to put some cutting oil in there and we'll just turn this in and we will go down to the bottom where it bottoms out. And I'm going to put this in a different gear so that doesn't spin in the, on the machine. That should hold it, I think. As I go down with that tap follower, I'll just uh, tighten it up by moving my quill in, make sure it stays engaged. And I think we're at the bottom there. Pull that tap follower out of the way. And we'll come right out of there. I want this jam nut to be 3 8 of an inch thick. And uh, to measure that, I got my parting tool in here I'm going to part off with. And I've just kind of lined it up flush with the bottom on this, uh, this side because that's the side that's going to be the form the, the top of the nut there. And I've got a little magnetic dial indicator down here and I can just dial in 375 thousandths. That's one, two, three, 75 right there. That should be my proper thickness of the jam nut. So I've got my parting tool in there. I'm going to uh, start parting this. I'm not gonna part it completely off though. I want to get the tool in a little ways and I'm going to back it out because uh, if you look on most nuts, the top of it, if you look, is kind of chamfered over here. You got a little bit of relief up there. That's just so you don't have a nice sharp corner there. I want to put that feature into the nut. So I am going to now I just need a cutter that's got a an angle on it. I'm going to use a threading tool here. And I'm gonna have to move my cutter just a little bit. I wanna just bring that in until it breaks that corner over until it's right around that radius. That looks good. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna barely hit the bottom on this. That's plenty. 
I'm not gonna fully radius that one, but I did wanna just kinda knock those corners off a little bit. And now we'll put our parting tool back in. I can go back to 375 on my dial indicator to get it lined right back up where we were at. And we should be ready to go. There we go. And I got one of my jam nuts done. I'll take a uh, countersink and countersink those so that uh, don't have any burrs on it. But uh, that one's done. I'm going to do another one and I'll do the second one off camera. Same exact process. So I've switched out now to some 7 8 inch stock and uh, we're going to be making two of these castle nuts. The process, at least on the lathe, is exactly the same as before, just a little bit different dimensions. Uh, these are half inch thick. Uh, a little bit thicker than that jam nut, but uh, same feature on the bottom, same features on the top. Uh, so we'll go ahead and knock these out real quick and then we'll cut the castle grooves over on the milling machine. to cut our slots in the castle nut. I've got this set up here on the milling machine. I've got a stop here where I can just rotate this three times and just do a straight cut moving in this direction and I uh, should be able to cut all those cross slots in there just fine. Uh, what is that? That's a 3 16 inch end mill and I just measured across the, the points here. It was a uh, one inch. I used a uh, edge finder to find the edge here and then just moved in a half an inch on the DRO. So, we are ready to go. Let's see how this cuts to a full depth. I'm hoping I can do this in one pass. Stop the mill. I'll turn it to my next flat here. pass on this one. castle nut. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll do the other one. I'm going to take this over to my scotch bright wheel and just deburr that real good. But uh, I think we got it down. So let me get the next one done. Well, I think that we are ready to start putting stuff back together. Here are my castle nuts. Here are my jam nuts. Here are the pieces that uh, 
that uh, Chuck Bomarito made. I made the uh, valve rods. I spent some quality time over there with my wire wheel and I cleaned up these castings on the, uh, the these valve rods that go up to the crankcase as well as the, the piston or the, the, the valve holders there. These are some of the parts we won't be reusing uh, over here. So let's start assembling one of these. We'll start with the valve side of the valve rod here. Um, we'll start with one of these pieces here. This just kind of holds the rings. This is the ring that goes on here. This is a, actually machined out of cast iron. You can see there's a little uh, compression area in there where it can join together. We'll put the ring on there. I'll be either buying or making new rings before this is done, but I'm just kind of putting it together. This is just basically a spacer to space those rings apart. We'll put the top ring on here. And again, there's another little keeper there. And then here is where my castle nut goes. There's a hole drilled through this rod so you can tighten this up and you line that hole up with one of the slots in your castle nut there and put a cotter pin in there and that's what holds all that together. So uh, there's one of them. Let's do the second one here. Same process. Bottom piece on. Put the spacer in here. Put a ring on. A little keeper there. And the castle nut on the end. And I'm not going to worry about tightening those up to extremes right now because they got to come back apart. So next I'm going to put on the valve stem couplers and we'll start with a jam nut that is used to tighten that up and, and lock it in place. We'll just uh, screw that on both of these. Next, we'll put on the valve stem couplers. And uh, again, these were made by Chuck Bomarito, uh, outside screwball on YouTube. And uh, if you don't follow Chuck, I'd encourage you to go at least take a look at the video that he did on making these uh, valve stem couplers. Uh, let's get these on. Of course, all this is going to have to be adjusted once the engine goes back together to get the uh, the links and the strokes and everything just right. But uh, those are looking good. Now we'll take our valve stems and put them on the valve rods. And there we go. That's going to kind of rock about that much right there, and we will put a cotter pin in there to hold that together. And there we go, guys. Got our um, valves back together, ready to go back into the uh, Stoker engine. Well, guys, just once again, uh, big thank you to Chuck Bomarito over at Outside Screwball. He, uh, of course, did these parts for me here. Uh, big time saver for me. That was one less thing I had to make. And I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. Go check out his channel, guys, Outside Screwball on YouTube. And uh, he's got a video he put up on, on making these. And uh, he'll tell you about all of his challenges he had along the way. It's, it's worth your time. So uh, go check out Chuck. 
As far as what's left to do on this, I do still need to either buy or make some rings. I know there's some companies that make these. I may attempt to make them myself. Um, I need to just do a little bit more looking into that. These rings are usually made out of cast iron. I got the blueprints for them over there. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I need, I've never made any steam engine rings, so I may try to do those myself. The other thing I need to do is make new castle nuts up here where uh, it holds the, the caps on the valve rods. Um, I didn't catch these when I was ordering material or I would have made them this time. Uh, that's three quarter inch. I don't have that size hex material. So next time I put in an order at my master car, I'll order me uh, a foot of uh, three quarter inch hex and I'll get those knocked out. I think there's a couple of other castle nuts I'm gonna have to make for this project and at least one more in another size. So I need to, need to look at it and maybe go ahead and get that material ordered as well. Well, there you go, that's gonna be another wrap. Got our uh, valve assemblies, ready to go back into the stoker. Mostly ready to go back in the stoker. Still a few little things to do, but I think the hard part's done. So uh, glad to have this part done. And uh, we'll be continuing on this project. Still lots and lots of work to do, but uh, one step closer right here. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, thumbs up or appreciate it as our comments, and we will catch you on the next video.